next witness will be uh, Antina Sangalasa. Okay. And how are you related to Karen? She's my daughter. Thank you. Okay. You may proceed. Thank you. Are you um, able to identify the plaintiff in the work? Yes. Okay. And um, what is your um, occupation and level of education? I have an associate in respiratory therapy, and uh, right now I'm pursuing my nursing. I'm three quarters in the way of BSN, bachelor's in science nursing. Um, I've been working as a CNA for 19 years. Okay. Um, in, your, in your work, have you ever, um, in your work in the medical field, um, how often or have you ever interacted with uh, children? Yes, okay. right now I'm actually going through rotation in, in clinicals. Mm -hmm. And um, what is your relationship to the child, to Julian? He's my grandson. Okay. And um, how often, how much time do you spend with him? Every time, whenever he comes home, all the time. Okay. And would you say that you guys have a close relationship? He's my grandson. We have a very close relationship. Okay. And um, how old is he? He's 18 months. And um, so, um, how many children do you have? I have five kids. Okay. And uh, how old is the youngest and how old is the oldest? The oldest is 34 and uh, the youngest is 18. Okay. Um, would you say that you have a lot of experience being around children? Of course, I have five children, and I've taken care of other children, you know, nieces and nephews, okay. friends, children, too. And um, how would you describe your observation? What are your observations um, with uh, me and um, my son, the baby? Oh, you love your son. You will definitely love your son. He loves you very much. And how do you know that we have? Like, uh, whenever you're going to work, he, he doesn't want you to leave. He's always saying, Mama, you know that. And uh, he's your son, you breastfeed him. So that's where you create the bond, through breastfeeding. Okay. Um, so when did you first meet the plaintiff? Uh, I would say August 2017, I'm sure. Under what circumstances did you meet the plaintiff? Uh, you invited him to our house. And um, in that interaction, um, based on your observation, what did you observe about the plaintiff? At first I so thought that he was a nice person. I even said that. But then as time went on, things started changing. It's like when you're around someone, you start seeing certain things that are off in uh, I even mentioned it as a mother, you know, concerned. Okay. Well, I was away um, between, well, I was away in Wisconsin. Um, how would you, what, what time frame would you put on that, me being away in Wisconsin? I, I think it was, uh, I'm not so sure, but I know that uh, it was up to December, uh, probably, let's see. December of what year? 2017, okay. uh, up to December, I know that for okay. sure, yeah. While I was away, um, did you uh, talk to me on the phone? All the time, okay. all the time. And then as a parent, how did you feel about me being away? I was not happy about it of course because one thing we wanted you to stay in school that's that was a main concern we wanted you to stay in school and uh, you know I know you made your choice but definitely I wanted you to both me and your dad wanted you to be in school mm -hmm. 
Um, did we ever discuss uh, the living arrangement in Wisconsin? How how it was? We uh, because constantly you were, you know, texting. He's not home. You 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 need food, and then I text back. Can you just at least get get her some food? You know, so yeah, we were constantly, you know, texting. Okay, and then um, based on your knowledge, um, why did, why did I come back to Las Vegas? Because you had to come. Personal knowledge. Sustained. Okay. Um, when I came back to Las Vegas at the end of December, uh, what condition was I in? Like? What was it based on your observation? Well, uh, I didn't like the way you look. Of course, you were pregnant, but uh, you know, you you looked like a, you know you would have been going through so much, so much. You you know, when someone is stressed, for me because I've been into nursing school, I have to uh, you know assess people. Objection yes, you were response, looking right? stressed. I'll, I'll allow it just to that point to explain why she thought she looked stressed. Her hair was all falling. I asked her. She was wearing a wig because the hair was falling. When someone is very stressed, the hair falls. Even the skin condition changes when someone is stressed. And that's uh, what I saw in the brittle nails. Yeah. You're going beyond what you observe, just talking generally. So we'll stop the testimony right there, and you can ask another question. Um, OK, so when I returned uh, back to Las Vegas, what was my um, occupation? What was I doing? You, were, you went back to school, and then you were working at a, a call center. Yeah. And then um, the plaintiff come back to Las Vegas. I know there was a time when he had to come back, when he moved permanently. But he did come and he was uh, living in a hotel, with uh, different kinds of hotel. You'll be in one hotel and then you'll be in another hotel. And that's what I saw. Estimate, uh, around what time did we uh, finally sign a lease for an apartment? Construction personal knowledge and relevance. I'll sustain it as phrased. When do you remember when the first time um, the uh, Nicole or uh, Nicholas and Cameron moved? Do you remember approximately when they moved into their own apartment? I'm not so sure, but uh, should be in. Uh, I'm not so sure. Were you present at the move into the apartment? When Physically. you when you were moving, yes. And uh, what was your role in that room? Helping, Put, you know, putting things away. Okay. And um, what was your observation of the uh, plaintiff? He, my husband did all the, the, the moving. I would say 95% of the moving, taking things from the truck into the apartment, 95%. He was constantly drinking, and he was upstairs in his uh, apartment. That's what I observed. And then later on, in the end, when everything was almost ending, that's when I saw maybe two people come. In. But the things were already finished. Everything was already in the apartment. Just a little mix. Okay, and then um, how often did you visit the apartment? Many times we were visiting. OK, and then what was the condition of the apartment? When you were there, it was uh, clean. The apartment was clean. Yes. Do you know if the uh, plaintiff has a job? I've never known any job. I've never seen him go to work or mention anything about a job. Oh, um, were you present when the baby was born? Yes, I was there. OK. And um, how, many, how many days did I stay in the hospital? But to your observation and knowledge? I'd say. Two, two to three days. Okay, oh, who did you see come visit the baby? Or I know your friend was there. My past and wife and their daughter were there. And uh, Nicholas' mom and uh, 
her friend, I don't know who she is, they did come. Um, prior to that, had you met Nicholas' mom's friend before? No. Okay. And um, um, based on your observation, um, how did his mom and his friend interact in the hospital while you were there, while you were in the hospital? Room? Objection. What's the relevance about how his mother and her friend acted in the hospital? Because she claims that she wanted to have, she wants to have a relationship with the um, um, baby, but there's a key, there's a key. Who, the friend or the grandmother? The grandmother. She, she, there's a key information, something that she did that um, said otherwise. Are we have I'll allow the answer to the question. Are you trying to impeach the grandmother's testimony? I mean, she... She was on the stand. One she, moment. Uh, she, she claimed something, but did otherwise, you know, while other people were there in the hospital. Here in the courtroom? No, no, no. And she claimed that she had wants to have, wanted to have a relationship with the baby, you know. Um, but in the hospital, and she, I mean, in the hospital. All right. So you want to... All right. I'll allow it for possible impeachment and take it towards the wing. And I'll strike it if it's not responsive. Okay. She couldn't hold the baby. And uh, she was seeing Nick's mother? Yes. She, could, she couldn't hold the baby. And uh, I mean, that, that's what I can say that she, she couldn't she couldn't hold the baby and uh, oh, let me think something else and also she uh, was thinking was talking about her having to go sight sight sightseeing and if you wanting you wanna be you know you wanna have a relationship. You are not even you. You cannot even hold the baby. You don't want to hold the baby. All you are talking about is going sightseeing. So I I didn't see how, you know, this is your first grandchild. You know, to me it would be very important that I stay with my grandson. This is my first grandson, and all you talk about is sightseeing. Okay. Okay. Um. Did you interact with her um, often? Not much. Not much at all. Um, okay, so were you present at the baby shower? I was. Okay, what were your observations of the baby shower, the plaintiff at the baby shower? Well, he was always at the bar with his friend. He was always at the bar with his friend and giving to cut that in, leave. And that's how it was, drinking all the time. And who else was at the baby shower? Your friends were there, and he brought a friend too. Have you have you ever met his aunt? No. Okay. Have you ever met anyone else in his family? No. Okay. Were you present, physically present in the? Uh, oh no, I'm sorry. Um, after I was discharged out of the hospital, were you present during that um, discharge? Yes, I was. Okay, and then after we left the hospital, where did we go? To my house, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Okay, and um, did, what, to your knowledge, what was the reason why we went to your house? Objection, speculation. Sustained. Um, how long did we stay at your house? About two to three weeks. Okay, and then, um, were you present in the apartment on Buffalo on May 21st, 2018? I cannot say the date exactly, but I was in, main, in, in that apartment many, many times, yes. Do you recall being on FaceTime on May 21st, 2018 when police were called to you? Definitely, yes. Okay. Um, and um, that day, did you, did you physically go to the apartment? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. And what was your observations of that? Objection vague. What was your observations um, when you got to the apartment? Who was there? The, the, the police were there. Um, we, my husband was there too. We went there together. And uh, Nicholas had brought some, some policemen, yes, to the apartment. Was Nicholas there? 
Yeah, you, you, you brought the police. No, was Nicholas there when yeah. you arrived? Yes. So how well, do you know he no. brought the police? I was there, and then he brought the police. So you were in the apartment, and then Nicholas came in with the with police? With the police. Okay. Okay, and um, was, your, was your husband, was my dad, your husband, present yes. Yes. Um, during uh, that particular um, incident? There's a, there were two incidences about police. There's one incident where my husband was there. And then there was a, a incident where I was there and uh, my other daughter was there. Was this on May 21st, 2018? That, that day, he was, he was there, but he had to go to work okay. later on. Yes. Okay, and then um, on that um, day, you mentioned that you um, had seen Nicholas. What was the uh, what was your observation of that situation when he when the plaintiff came to the apartment? He, Nicholas was just uh, I, I didn't understand the way he was behaving. That's one thing I didn't know whether maybe he's drunk or he smoked something. I don't know. Objection. The, Speculation. Sustain. The testimony the is disregarded. Um, what was your observation um, of that situation? Just a general observation. Um, during that time. Objection vague. Sustained. Okay. What happened on May 21st to the best of your observation and knowledge? He packed his bag. Because he packed his bag, is that what you said? Yeah, the suitcase. He packed his suitcase because the police had said it, it's uh, advisable that uh, he leave until things come down. So he packed his bag and he left. And did the plaintiff um, not come back to the apartment on that day? Objection, personal knowledge. Oh, based on your observations, since you were there, did the plaintiff um, not While come you were at the apartment, did the plaintiff come back? Yes. Okay. With some, some people. And then what happened when the plaintiff came back? He came back with uh, three people. And uh, the way they were, they were threatening. So I said to my daughter, call the police. When I said call the police, that's when they all scattered out. And then I texted him. I said, what was that meant for bringing in people like that? You know, she just had a baby. And, she, and he replied my email and said, because you don't listen. Because you wanted Karen out of the apartment, that's why. Um, after, after I moved from the apartment, um, where did I go? Me and the baby. You came to live with us when you moved out of the apartment. Okay, and, um, since then have I lived at that apartment? I mean, with you guys, sorry. You have been living with us ever since you moved out of the apartment. Okay, um... Can we go ahead and look at my exhibit um, H, number 8? Let's see, that is the hair, the, the hair that was falling from the baby's head. Okay, if you could just keep scrolling. Do you know, do you know generally what these documents are? Yes, I do. And where were these, baby. where were these pictures taken? At our house here in Pendleton Court. Okay, and whose devices took these photos? It's a phone. But whose devices, sorry, took these photos? You did this. You took the photo. The photo. Okay. All right. Um, and um, Your Honor, I'd like to move to have these uh, pictures admitted. When were the pictures taken, ma'am? Uh, this. You remember? Uh, I, I, the hair is saying 2019, yes I know, but um, yeah, I know that. The recent one is this one, this one that uh, happened just this last week. When, he, when the, my husband and uh, my daughter went to uh, pick up the baby. Okay, hold on. So, and... Were you present? When were you present when the pictures were taken? Yes. And do they reflect what you saw 
when you were looking at your grandson? Yes, I'm the one. Hold on. Okay. Just a minute. Go ahead. Oh, I'm. No, no, I'm not oh, you. I'm sorry, Mr. Adam. Well, I, st I still don't have. I still don't have an understanding of when these pictures were taken. Were okay. they all taken at one time? This is. They were not all taken at one time. Okay. Ma'am, can you go through and indicate? Start with the first picture in the exhibit when that was taken. Were you present when it was taken? It was present. Uh, I gave the the, the the bath. I gave uh, the bath to, to to my grandson, and I had to call him. About when was that? This is uh, 2019 May. Okay. The next photograph is that still it's, that same? It's still the same. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Third photograph. This one is the uh, April 29, 2019. April 29? Yeah, this one is April, the, 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 is it the third one, yes. Okay. Yes. And you were present when that was taken? Yes. Okay, next one, number four? No, in no, November 2019, I was there. Okay. November 1829, I was there in July. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. November of 2018 or no, November 2019? 2019, sorry. It's yes, on the 18th. That's the fourth. Answer. Yes. That's the fourth one, all right. Mm -hmm. Is there a fifth photograph? There is a fifth one, July 15, uh, 2019. Are you present during that? I am always present because I'm always at home when, when, whenever. That, that isn't my question. Were you there? Yes. When that photograph was taken? Yes, I was. Okay. Are there other photographs? There are that's... other photographs. Okay, April 26th. Six. April 26th? I was there. Okay. 2019, April, 20, uh, April 26th. Okay. Yeah, uh, another one, April 26th, 2019. Okay. The same. July 15th, 2019. I was there. July 29, 2019, I was there. Another July 15, from the same one, I was there. I'm, just, I, I'm a little bit confused because the exhibits that I, she appears to be reading dates off of things that do not appear in my version of this document. So, okay. and it seems like she's testifying, like right? she has independent recollection of all of these things and that's not what's that's I, not what's occurring. I cannot say that I, I this, remember each and every date, what, but I can honestly tell you that okay. every time the child is picked up, I'm always there because I have to drop off my daughter while she yeah, and well, her That's not son. the question, ma'am. The question mm -hmm. is were you there when the photograph was taken? Yes, I was. In each and every one of these photographs? In each and every one. And so the dates, you don't remember the dates, mm -hmm. you just remember you're reading the dates off of the documents. That yes, right? that's correct. Right. But I guess what I'm saying is that she seems to be looking at the date and then saying, well, I'm, I'm sure I was there because I'm always I'm not there. saying and I'm that's, sure. That's very different. Okay, yeah, I'm going to ask my witness a question. Right. I'm trying to establish the foundation. Ma'am. For each one of those photographs, you have to be able to say that you remember that photograph being taken, you were present when that photograph was being taken, and that the photograph accurately represents what you saw when the photograph was taken. I will say that honestly, that I was there. Well, are you saying that because you're always there or because you specifically remember these photographs and those events. I specifically remember, and I was there too. Okay. All right. Objection? I, I just don't think that the proper foundation has been made for authentication by this witness. So, uh, I'll, I'll allow it. Okay. Um, so, Your Honor, um, this is a larger exhibit, but um, it does show the condition of the baby. Every time I would pick him up, uh, I'm sorry. Ma'am, you can't testify yeah, at this point in time. But it's right, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, so, 
when you, when the baby got home, or gets home um, after being picked up, um, are you present at the very first diaper change every single time? I make sure that I do that, and I'm present every time. Okay. And um, are you present when we, uh, are you present when we are getting ready to give him his bath every time that he's there? I make sure that I am there and I'm participating. Okay. And um, uh, based on your observations, how would you describe the uh, condition of the baby when he's picked, when, I'm sorry, how would you describe the condition of your, the baby when um, you're changing his diaper and also getting him ready for the bath? Objection. Based on observation. That's it. She's asking, she just testified that she changes the baby's diaper every single time. And she's asking her just sort of in general, what, what's the, I mean, your Honor, my question was every yeah, time. Are we moment. talking about a specific incident? I mean, uh, it is a very generalized question. She can state what, if anything, she's observed about the baby when she's giving him a bath after a visit, how long that was after the pickup, or when she's changing a diaper, but it has to be something more specific. Okay. Um, how long after um, how long after the baby gets home do you uh, change his diaper each time? Right away because of incidences that happen all the time. So every time, okay. right away. And um, to your knowledge, what are the incidences that have happened? Always there's a, a, a poop that is uh, something else. Either it's a white poop or it's a uh, diarrhea with uh, muc mucus diarrhea or it's a uh, black stuff that I don't know or it's pasty or clay kind of all the time and there's always a diaper rash. That's my concern there. There's always a diaper rash. It's like Every time the baby comes, there's always a diaper rash. There's always a different kind of poop. It's like, what kind of food is the baby getting, being fed? Because it's always almost clay all the time, or it's diarrhea with the mucus in it. Okay. So that's my concern. And that's my own my concern. And then, the um, baby. based on your knowledge and observation, as a mother of five children, um, have, have you ever encountered this in any of your five children? I take care of my children very well. I never encountered. That's why I always want to be present when the baby comes, so that we know, you know, what to do yes. all the time. Okay, and are, are you present um, in um, the baby's doctor visits? Yes. Okay, and um, has the baby gone to see a doctor for his um, diaper rashes? Yes. Okay. And um, how severe are the diaper rashes based on your observation? They are very bad because... Uh, Objection. Calls for a medical I may, I'm, I think I, it's a general and no, you cannot testify as an expert witness, ma'am. Okay. So, um, she can say they're very bad, whatever that means. It goes to the weight, not the admissibility, sir. Okay, and, uh, Fair enough. So yeah, how, how she okay. already answered the question. Okay. Very it's very bad. And um, has has any of the diaper? Have you ever seen any of the diaper rashes bleed? Yes. Okay. And um, was the baby taken to the ho to, to 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 a hospital uh, following that? Yes. Okay. Um, can we turn to my exhibit? Um, if you look at the um, first uh, document, uh, well, if you, if you look through this um, exhibit, just uh, you know, like breezing through it, mm -hmm. um, do you know what this? Do you know what this is? No, it's a doctor's uh, hospital or doctor's uh, um, notes after after observation of the doctor. Okay, and can you identify the name that's on these um, papers? 
Ravello, Julian, Samuel. Mm -hmm. Are you, you, you mentioned, you stated earlier that you're present at the, the a doctor, a, each and every doctor's visits. Are you, were you present in um, when these documents are, are given? Yes. Your Honor, I'd like to move to have these documents admitted as well. Medical records. No objection. No objection. They'll be admitted. Okay. Can you read the uh, the? Can you read the, the, the location, the very first line on that page? What does that say? The emergency department physician has reviewed the information that you have provided concerning okay. Okay, medication. Thank you. That's the right document. Okay, so um, uh, the most recent doctor visit with the baby. Um, were you present? Yes, I okay. was. And um, what was the reason for the visit? Because the the diaper rash, there was no skin on the bottom of the baby of the the bum of the baby. There was no skin. The, it was bleeding. The rash, the diaper rash was bleeding. The skin was deep. Okay. That's why. And then, um, what actions? Oh, oops, sorry. Were you in the room when the doctor? Um, were, were you present when the doctor came into the room? Yes, I was. And then. Um, did uh, the doctor take any significant actions upon um, assessing the baby? He said that... Uh, Ma'am, you can't stop what he said. What did he do? He called uh, CPS. That's what he did. Okay. He, excuse me, that's hearsay. I don't know how to answer, but uh, I'm just saying what, what was... Well, if you're going to say that a doctor called CPS, then you better have the doctor here. Okay. And when is that report? Um, when is the report? Uh, the doctor's report? Mm -hmm. um, I have the reference number. It was made on... Um... No, when did this occur? Okay. Um, this occurred just recently on the 18th. The testimony as to what the doctor did is stricken because it is hearsay. And I apologize, Your Honor, but I, I'm looking at, I'm hearing about a November date. I'm looking at a September record. I, I don't even know. Like, Marshall, okay. would you get the exhibit for me so that? This is exhibits. This is her exhibit six. So, right. Okay. So this is I'm I'm looking at this page. This is the page that was filed. So you're indicating that so, you were not served with this exhibit. I'm, unless it's out of order, I'm going to see if I can find that page. Your Honor, I don't know. I'm not I'll, responsible if the if the other party. You know, isn't able to keep track of their uh, papers. You know. It's, it's a well, the issue is whether or not you serve this on them. I That's do not what have I'm that. Saying. I do not have that page. I'm looking at the next exhibit just to see if maybe that it got, you know, the pages got transposed. I don't. I don't have any records from. What was the day on that? November or something. November 18th, 2019. So, like, eight, a week ago. Yeah, I do not have those. Okay. I'm going to take a moment to take a look at them. Sure. Okay, so, it would appear that it's just these, these first three pages. So, I actually, I do object to the introduction of these three pages. Okay. When did you get those records, um, ma'am, and when did you send them to Mr. Lytle's office? Okay, so I got these on the um, 18th, and actually the order from the department said to um, just bring the exhibits to the um, 
marked. It never mentioned anything about filing them and serving them. The only thing I was supposed to file and serve Well, you're always supposed to serve them to the opposing side or list them in your exhibit list. Yeah, I, I, I listed them. They're listed in my exhibit list, but what happened was we had a trial that was supposed to be set. Right. Um, and I um, filed and I served um, exhibits at that time, but since uh, our judge decided to drop the case, there was a gap time lapse in between. And so um, when we finally got the new order from the department, the order stated that the thing, the only thing that was supposed to be filed and served was the um, pre the pretrial memorandum. And I, I did that. I filed Under the rules you would have needed to supplement. However, I will allow the exhibit to come in subject to the potential that I have to continue this matter so Mr. Lytle can investigate the issue because it's not fair for him to be surprised by it just today. Makes sense. All right, so that's the rule, Mr. Lytle. Is the other um, medical records in there? Yes. Okay. And were you present for um, the hospital visit on uh, September 10, 2019, at the uh, UMC. That's the, the second document, UMC. Yes. So, um, was the baby prescribed medication by the emergency department? Yes. Uh, based on the observation of the uh, dead barrage, um, like the reason for the visit, um, how, how bad was it? Hang, hang on. So, in this record, there's nothing about diaper rash. <clears throat> We're looking at the UMC. There's something about an ear infection, but not diaper rash. So. Yeah, actually, Your Honor, there, there it is. Um, well, the record will speak for itself, and I will review the record. Oh, I'm sorry, no. Oh, I confused this. This one is the... Um, uh, this one is the ear infection, and I have it listed on um, my exhibits list. Okay. He was just pointing out that you asked your mom about a rash. A rash, yeah. And he was pointing out there's no rash in that visit. The reason right. for the visit is an ear infection. So. Okay. What prompted us to take the baby to the uh, emergency room? Because he was crying. He was pulling on his ear. And uh, he also... It's some kind of diarrhea. I don't know what it is. Okay. And then, um, was this following, was this the same day the baby was picked up from his dad? Yes. Okay. And how long had the baby been gone with his dad? I cannot say exactly because sometimes it's like two days and sometimes it's five days. So, so do you remember how long he was gone prior to this visit? So did the doctor prescribe medication to the baby? He did. Okay. And then did you observe uh, me administering medication to the baby? Yes. Did you administer any medication to the baby? Yes. Okay. And then um, the next, the next uh, medical record that's on there, um, dated December 18, 2018, at the bottom right. It's like, it's a last one. Okay. And were you present when he was taken to the um, emergency room? Emergency room. Okay. And that day. Yes. Okay. What prompted us to take him to the uh, hospital? Um, I know he had diarrhea also, and. Um, Throwing up, I'm sure. I'm, I'm not so sure. I think he, he had. I know he had diarrhea at that time. Okay, so um, when the baby is picked up from his dad, is, does he often have diarrhea? All the time. Oh, all, all, all the time. It's a, some kind of diarrhea that I don't know. Okay, and then based off of your um, knowledge and experience with your five children, is a baby having diarrhea a common thing? Objection. No. I'll allow it. Not always. You, baby cannot have diarrhea. Every time he's picked up, he's coming home with diarrhea. Okay, so 
your interaction with the baby, um, like how would you describe just your observation and knowledge of his health since you're there? Whenever he comes, he's a uh, the eyes are kind of like, a, I don't know, like a pulled down or something like that. And for me, it's, it's, I just think that maybe it's because of the diarrhea or the food that he is getting. That's what I just think. He comes home dirty. The feet are dirty, like he's walking outside. The, ra the skin rush is very... Uh, rough, this, the, the, the skin is rough with some kind of rush that's on, on him all the time. So that's what I observe all the time. Okay. Does the baby have any, from your knowledge um, of being there at doctor's visits, does the baby have any skin conditions? When he comes home, yeah. He, he has skin condition all the time. He has some kind of rush every time. In, in, the, in the doctor's office, has the doctor ever, um, while you were present, mentioned any skin conditions that the baby has? Projection, you're saying? Sustained. Okay. Um, do you know of any skin conditions that the baby has? It comes with uh, some kind of eczema sometimes, okay. and, uh, and the diaper rash. Okay. And um, does he have medication? Um, well, how, how, how do you observe me? Uh, caring for the uh, So let me ask a question. When you do the transfers, do you give the medication and the instructions for the application of the medication well, the, to the, his father? No, the thing is he doesn't, um, he doesn't have eczema medication because uh, you can uh, go... Any of the medications. You're on a 2-2-5 exchange. I have, uh, have you ever given medication to his father? I have given saying, him um, Nystatin instructed him um, to use it on the diaper area. And this is on a talking parents record, recent one that I didn't okay, get to submit. I'll take but a I have and I've instructed him that he needs to mix it with the um, zinc because it's a strong medication. Okay. Um, that was recently, correct? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. But um, any other time that yeah, that was recent. Yeah. Um, so have you observed me treat treating well not treating, but taking care of the skin condition that the baby has? Yes. Okay, and what do I use generally? Uh, diaper rash and the night statin uh, and the zinc. No, not the, I'm sorry, not, I'm not talking about diaper rash, the, I'm talking about Oh, the, I'm forgetting the, 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 the medication, but it's, it's got a blue top and it's kind of like a So you, you, you observe your daughter using the medication on your grandson, right? Yes. And, um, do you know, to your uh, knowledge, is the medication bought in a store? Um, Walgreens and Walmart. Okay. And then, um, does, it, does it help with the skin condition? It does. Okay. And then did a doctor ever, um, did a doctor ever have to, well, to your knowledge, and you being there all the time present um, at doctor's visits as well, did a doctor ever have to tell me um, Ma'am, you cannot get into what a okay. doctor's told you. Okay. Well, have I had? It'll either be in the medical record, in which case it is potentially um, admissible as non hearsay as a medical record for purposes of diagnostic and treatment, but not necessarily causation. But she can't say what the doctor said. You okay. have to have your pediatrician or whoever the doctor was at the time, come in and testify, right. if it's not in the record. Okay. Um, to your knowledge, has anyone had to ever tell me how to treat? That's Ed asking the same okay. question in a different way, and you cannot do that. Um, yeah. Have you ever treated, have you ever taken care of um, a baby with eczema? I have. And um, is this something that runs in your family? Yeah, it's in my, runs in my, in, in my family. Okay. And um, can you get treatment lotions from a drugstore? Yes. Like, do you, do you get treatment lotions from a drugstore? You can, yes. Okay. And how do you know 
it's the right um, lotions to use on a baby. I read. Okay. Um, can the average, can you say, um, so since you read the, um, the bottles, you know, the lotion bottles and all that, can you say that the average person can go to uh, a drugstore and read and look for something to treat us and to, to take care of a baby with a skin condition? One moment. Objection. Relevance. I do find that the, it lacks relevance. The first thing I'd have to find is that the baby has eczema. Two, that the father was informed that he had eczema and was given medical records to that effect. And then three, that there's evidence that he has not been treating the eczema. So, like, can you ju judicial notice uh, previous medical records that have been submitted? So. Um, to judge, uh, I cannot judicially notice previous medical records. Okay, because I submitted medical there records. There is a notation in the file of a left side filing, which means it's kept under seal because it contains confidential information of medical records. If, if Mr. Um, Lytle doesn't have an objection to my looking at those records and making them a court's exhibit in this proceeding under seal. I can do that. If you saw them previously, I assume you did. Uh, I'm not 100% sure which record she's speaking of, but... If it's a know. medical record of the child, you do not have an objection to it? No. It, this is from some time ago. This was not yes. I have recently. No, I have no objection to... Okay. Previously filed medical records for the child. Okay, so based on um, your observation of the baby and your experience raising five children, five babies, um, would you say that the um, baby comes back in a condition that exhibits he has been being taken care of properly? Objection. Sustained. So based on your um, observation of the um, baby in the house, um, is he taken care of at our house? Can you say that? Uh, can you say that? Is your grandson taken care of at your house? Yes. Okay. And um, if you were to compare his uh, care at home and the condition you observe him in when he comes home, uh, what, kind, what type of comparison would you make? He comes in with a rush, we always treat it. And he goes back with none, and every time he comes in, he has another one. We always take care of it. That's, it's a cycle. It's a cycle. That's what it is. Um, does the baby have hair on his head? On the hair on his what, excuse me? Has his head. head. You, the hair was cut, uh, she, the, the trimmed. Okay. What what type of hair? What type of hair texture does he have? Objection. Relevance. Your Honor, I'm trying to establish um, a point. What point? The care of the baby. Because I have an exhibit that shows hair. Uh, uh, all right. So you can describe your grandson's hair. The hair was. Uh, before it was uh, nice and thick, and it was full, and then it started falling. That's what I can say. Okay. And so, um, do you ha do you have any experience caring for his hair, his his texture of hair? His hair? I do. I I uh, do the baby shampoos and creams to try to make it uh, nice and thick, be healthy. Okay. And. Um, Is his hair taken care of at your house? He is, and uh, whenever he comes home, also another thing is when he comes from the dead, in the back there is a note, there, there are notes there. I have to struggle with the baby crying because I have to take out the notes because I don't think he combs the hair. That's the honest truth. He doesn't comb the hair. Or maybe he doesn't even wash the hair. That's the thing. One moment. 
the last statements with regard to what he does or doesn't do were stricken. Her statements that she has to come out knots when he comes back from his father's is allowed. Um, do you remember roughly when the baby's hair was cut? I don't know, sometime this year. Okay. Did, um, did, did anyone at our house cut his hair? No. Okay. And how many haircuts has he had this year? You. Okay. Um, at your at your house, and based on your observation and knowledge, experiences, um, does does the baby ever complain about his hair? Does he ever make a fuss about his hair? On your observation. When uh, so, whenever I'm combing the hair, of course he is fussing because the the hair is knotted, of course. He's gonna fuss. He's a baby. And then, um, does the baby ever? Um, he doesn't talk, but does he ever do any signals that he wants his hair to be cut? Based on your observation. On a nineteen-month-old, mm -hmm. how are you going to interpret that? Right. I mean, now we're he, getting into real he, speculation, trying to interpret whether or not the baby's signals mean he wants his hair cut. Right. Does he ever act uncomfortable? Like does he does his hair ever indicate that he's uncomfortable with it? Well I that's just when too vague. No, that's just too vague. This is just very vague, very conclusive, very speculative. Okay. Thank you. She she can certainly testify that when she has to come out knots, he's fussy about it because it yeah. hurts. That she can testify to. I'll pick up where we left off. I think you testified that, I think your words were, every time mm -hmm. that the child comes back from Nick's custodial time, that he has diarrhea. He does have diarrhea. But looking through the, the exhibits that were provided, I see one record of, of treatment for diarrhea from December 18, 2018. It's the record you testified about. Has he ever gone? To, uh, is there is, are there other medical records out there that you know of from other visits for diarrhea, or is it just the one from a year ago? We always treat with the medication that he has. We treat him. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. But I'm asking, other than the 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 one record from a year ago, has he ever gone to see a doctor because of the, this diarrhea that you claim he has every time? This time, the, just this last week, he had diarrhea. Yes. He had to go to, when he had the bed, di uh, bed um, eczema, there was a diarrhea too that was there, a, a stringy mucus diarrhea. So you're saying that the record that we didn't get served with, that, that was for diarrhea too? I don't know what you're talking about. I thought you said it was for diaper rash. That's why I'm just trying to... I'm asking, other than the December 18, 2018 medical record, do you know of another time when he went to a medical provider to be treated for diarrhea? Yes, been yes, gone. We didn't we, probably she didn't put it in, but yeah, the baby has been going to uh, oh. because every time he goes, he, there's a diarrhea, there's a diaper. So either we use the medication that we already have in the fridge, or okay. All right. So I'm a mother. I know how to treat my own children. So it sounds like you're very involved in caring for this child, is that correct? I am involved because I live with them. Right. And Karen Karen lives with you, correct? Yes. Does Karen pay you rent? Objection what? relevance. Does Karen pay you rent? Objection all, relevance. All allowed it goes to um, the economic um, issues with regard to the party and the FDFs on file. Okay. It does. She yeah. does. How much a month does she pay rent? 400 something just for the rent and not including utilities. So she, she also pays for some of the utilities? Of course, we all share. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how much does she pay you for uh, child care? Anything? I don't know what you're asking. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking, does she pay you for, for all your help with caring for Julian? 
I am Julian's grandmother. So I'm, I'm not, for me, I'm not going to allow for, uh, uh, to He's pay. just asking. Oh, you're he's not asking. paid anything for child care, correct? I'm not paid. Okay. Fair enough. All right. There's a stack of exhibits there. On the front page, there's like a chart that says Ravello v. San Blas exhibit by here. Do you see that? Up there? Yeah, yeah. And it's numbered 1 through 21. Have you ever seen this? image before? What do you mean? The very last page. It should say 11.05 a.m. at the top. The very last page of the first exhibit. Oh, okay. At the very top of the middle, it says 11.05 a.m. It's a screen cap from a cell phone. Just you see that? Right. She's trying to get to the top of the page. Oh, it's oh. The way the, There's the clip. The clip's in the way. Clip. Yeah. Hi. That, that makes sense, actually. All right. And do you see under there, under 11.05 a.m., you see where there's like, it looks like an email address? Yes. Is that your email address? Uh, I'm not so sure. I know I can see my name there, but... Uh, is, is ETI an email address that you've used? I, I don't use that email. Have you ever used that email address? Objection, Your Honor. That I witness don't. already answered that she doesn't know. No, she didn't. I, I, I don't she doesn't use, use it now. He's saying, did you ever use it? No, I never use this email. I, I use a Gmail. Okay. Have, you, have you ever exchanged text messages with Nick Ravello? Long time ago. Okay. All right. Well, do you do you recognize this as as text messages that you exchanged with Nick Ravello a long time ago? I, 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 I cannot tell you because a long time ago when he... he Blocked my email a long time ago when they were having issues. So I cannot, I cannot tell you. Okay, but it's possible that I cannot yeah, say it's exactly. possible because I, I don't I, know. One moment. One moment. I don't She's know. answered the question. She says she doesn't know. I don't so know. It's irrelevant whether it's possible or not because she can't answer that question. Hmm. Sustained. Well, I don't Let me just ask you this: did, did you ever did you ever bring up the concept of a dowry with Nick Rebello? Never. Never. I don't know what you're talking about. Did you about. ever indicate to Nick Rebello that he was going to owe your family lots of Objection, money? Objection, Your Honor. Sure. I don't know what you're no, talking about. No, she didn't answer. It's a different question overruled. Right. I don't know what you're talking about. Have you ever indicated to Nick Rebello that he was going to owe your family money because? He had gotten your daughter pregnant. I don't know what you're talking about. I are, don't know. Are you familiar with the concept of a dowry? Maybe. I don't know. What, what is dowry? Uh, Objection, Your Honor. He's asking her to answer a question. Like, I'm asking you if you're one moment. One no, moment. I'm asking she you. She answered the I question. One know. moment, ma'am. She answered the question, so move on. I have no further questions. Okay. Redirect? Um, no redirect, Did she say no further witnesses? She said no further witnesses. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, do you wish to do any rebuttal? Well. Other than investigating the alleged um, November 18th report. Your Honor, may I, um, do I get a chance to go to testify as well? That's, you're a witness, so if you oh. want to take the stand, that's okay. why I was, okay. so Sorry. you do want to take the stand. Yes. I okay. Do. That's, that's what fine. I was trying to figure out. That, I, that's why Mr. Life will stop, because okay. he was yeah. going to determine whether he was going to call you right. in the rebuttal. So, all right, you can take the stand. Okay. All right. Okay. What would you like to say? Okay. Um, so, um, actually, I wrote down I wrote down like everything points that I wanted to. Am I allowed to use those or no? It's just things I wanted to say. I'll allow it, provided that's all it is. Is I mean, you it's can't just, just read from a statement. You have to testify. Right. It was just to help me keep track of you know the things that I was going to bring up. We'll see here. 
This is where we get into this difficulty, and it comes up all the time in pro se cases. So I, I need to be able to make objections to preserve my record, and without questions being posed, right? The, the only objections that I can make are basically motions to strike, motions to strike. Correct. Right. If she's got sort of written testimony, right, then it would seem to me that the that the proper mechanism for that, the only thing that I've ever seen work in these cases, is for her to put that into an affidavit and and then have and, and then give me an opportunity to review it ahead of time and make objections to certain portions of that affidavit or to prepare impeachment right, examination me, on those Let points. me see what it is you wanted to take to the stand. Yeah. You hand it to the marshal. And Sean is a very extensive typed statement. Um, and it isn't just reminder notes. So the answer is no. You have to give your testimony um, on the points that you want to make. Um, and we'll make a copy of that simply for the record, put it on the left side, or a, and that'll be... Uh, we don't have to use it. I mean, I can just... Uh, well, yeah, I but I'm just... making a record in case you ever object to the fact that I didn't let you use oh, it. Oh, okay. 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 So we'll just make that a court's exhibit for demonstrative purposes of my ruling number two. Okay. Start with um, just the beginning when I met the plaintiff. Okay, so at the time um, it was my uh, summer break of my junior year of college. Um, I was working downtown. Um, I was working two jobs at a restaurant, and then at night I was working um, at this new like hip bar that had opened up. Um, and so me and my uh, coworker, we were at the bottom. Um, of the, uh, we were checking guests in that were going in. Um, and so then what happened was the plaintiff approached us. And then he began um, flirting, and me and my coworker, we didn't really, enter we didn't entertain it at all. Like, we, we were at work. We really didn't want um, anything to do with that. And so then um, the plaintiff asked me for my phone number, and I refused to give him that. I did give him um, social media. Um, and so later on, he contacted me on social media. Um, and uh, he was persistent with messages, messages, messages. And then finally I decided, okay, fine, I'll, you know, talk to this person. Um, and so we decided to go to meet. Um, at the first time, I didn't, uh, I didn't meet, I didn't go to meet him because I just wasn't unsure. The second time, um, after he had brought it up that I didn't go to meet, uh, he... He, he mentioned it, and I finally said, okay, I'll go. So I went, um, and then um, we, we developed like a, uh, a connection. Um, and after that, we decided to uh, pursue a relationship. And so um, since it was my summer break, and he knew that, he asked me if I wanted to go visit um, his home where he's from. I was under the impression that he lived in Las Vegas, and um, you know he was going back to visit home, which was Wisconsin. Um, and it was supposed to be for a week. And I told him, yeah, um, I'll go visit. You know, since I'm on summer break, mo summer break, might as well. So we went to visit, and then um, while I was there, it, w it came time for me to leave and to go back home um, and so I told the plaintiff oh, it's time for me I need to go back you know like my plane ticket and all of that um, to return home and then he didn't want me to leave he asked me to stay and um, since I had started college I hadn't taken any uh, breaks off I decided okay I can uh, take I can take a semester off and you know just explore and do just see see where this will go and so I decided to go back home and then um, get some of my things so I can spend the semester over there on the agreement that it was only going to be a semester. Um, soon after, that's when I became pregnant. Um, I'd never been pregnant before. I didn't, you know, it was completely unplanned. I didn't know what to do, but I knew my stance in terms of um, whether or not I was going to keep a baby or not. And, um, well, I, I, I just, I decided I wanted to keep a baby because that's uh, my values and beliefs. And so then... Um, I decided, I mean, at the time, I barely even knew the plaintiff that well. 
Um, I didn't know anything about him. He had told me a bunch of things, which later on were proven to be untrue in terms of um, what he does for a living um, and just him in general. Like, I didn't, I didn't know. It was so early on. And so I stuck it out um, from the summer of 2017 uh, until December of 2017. When I, um, I... When I was at his house in Wisconsin, he never had food in the house. Um, I was pregnant, mind you, at the time, and every time I tried to wake him up, he wouldn't want to go grocery shopping. Um, and I would reiterate to him, hey, I need to eat, you know, the doctor said I need to eat. And so um, I would call my parents all the time and tell them, hey, this is what's going on. I, I don't, you know, I'm in this place by myself. I don't know what to do. Um, and so they would try to talk to him on the phone. Most of the time he would evade talking to them on the phone, but they knew the situation. We'd FaceTime all the time. Um, and so I, like my health was kind of deteriorating so I decided at that time that it was I needed to go back home like it, I wasn't healthy and I was pregnant um, and I was I was barely showing too which was a big concern and so when I talked to the doctor in Wisconsin you know I told him all of that and he, he you know he was like okay cool good idea you know like okay idea um, to go home and so um, I I re like I spoke with him and spoke with my parents he didn't want to let me go back home my parents got really concerned about that whole situation um, of him trying to keep me at his uh, at his house when I you know kind of like against my will when I wanted to go back, um, finally they had to like threaten police and he finally said okay I'll, I'll let her go you know I'll let her go back home I wasn't working at the time either so I didn't have any money, and so um, my car was also in the shop. What happened was uh, my car needed coolant and he decided he wanted to he's not a mechanic he decided he wanted to change the coolant tube in my car. And uh, the coolant in my car, and he snapped the tube. My car was in the shop from that summer until December when I finally got my car back. Him and his aunt kept telling me that my car is going to be ready next week. Your car is going to be ready next week. And for some reason, I, I wasn't. I really wasn't um, convinced, and I wasn't comfortable. I didn't know what was going on. Um, but after the uh, police, uh, well, my parents threatening police and all that, magically I got finally got my car. I got my car and um, uh, packed all my stuff into the car, and we drove back to Las Vegas. And so um, when we drove back to Las Vegas, he didn't spend 24 hours here. Um, we went straight to my parents' house. He didn't spend 24 hours. Right when I got there, um, he he left. He said that he, need, he needed to go on a flight back to Wisconsin, which of which he went. Um, and so my parents helped me unload my car and put everything back into their house. And um, I re-enrolled back into my um, you know semester at school since I had taken a semester off. And I went to school and I was working part time as well. I was so pregnant. And then the plaintiff finally told me that he had changed and he was different um, because prior in Wisconsin, all he wanted to do all night was party, um, do drugs with his friends, and just hang out and be out. And so I was stuck in his home by myself um, in a place that I didn't know with people I didn't know. Um, and I was just was isolated in his house. Um, I, I maybe met some of his friends like once or twice here or there, but not anyone that I could say I'm developing any friendships or any anything like that with them. So. Um, when I was back here, I was working, going to school, getting ready for um, my baby to come. The plaintiff said he was changed and he was different. Um, for a few weeks while he was here, he didn't have a, a place to stay. He was homeless. Like he was going from hotel room to hotel room. And I kept telling him, you need to get a place to stay. You need to get a place to stay. You can't, you know, stay in the hotel room. And he was playing poker, drinking every night, going out with his friends. Finally, um, we finally decided to go look at apartments. We signed a lease at um, Inspire. Um, I paid my part of the deposit, he paid his part of the deposit. We were both on the lease, and so was his aunt. His aunt was on the lease because he didn't have a job. I had a job, but it didn't prove enough income. Um, so his aunt decided to go on the lease. And so um, with that, I had access to rent ledger, um, and I noticed that he, his aunt was paying for the apartment. And when I confronted him about it, he would say that he was paying for it, lying to me. And I knew he was, but I decided to, you know, allow him to say what he had to say so that, um, um, just just to, to say what he had to say, but I knew that he wasn't telling the truth based on my access to the rent ledger. Um, and so then, um, I, I didn't really stay at that apartment. Like I, I was kind of on and off, on and off between there and my parents' house um, because he was always out all night. Um, for a long time, we didn't even have furniture in the apartment. Um, and so I stayed with my parents for most of the time. When, um, we finally, when he finally went to Wisconsin to get his furniture, since he didn't want us to get new furniture here, um, my parent, he called up my parents and we moved everything into the um, apartment, of which my parents did most of the moving, and um, for us because I was I was very pregnant, but I, I helped out as well. He didn't really help out as much, um, and then, uh, so everything was moved in, um, and then the baby was born April 2018, April 25th. Your Honor, um, Your Honor I'm going to make a motion to strike everything that has been said up until the baby was born as irrelevant. Your Honor, may I respond? Denied. Okay. 
Okay. Um, and so um, the baby was born April 25th, 2018. Um, prior to him being born, I set up, I, I didn't work full time, so I couldn't um, get health insurance through the company I was working with, but I did get health insurance um, through the state, uh, temporary for the baby. Um, and then, so I set that up um, for him. And then all, all, all doctor's visits after he was born, I took him by myself. Um, so he was born in the hospital, in the delivery room. Oh, I was in labor for 20 hours. In the delivery room, for all 20 hours was, well, for most 24, 20 hours, was um, my parents, my sister, my best friend. Um, he, was in, he was there as well. Um, and then after the baby was born, my, oh, no, I'm sorry, during, during labor, um, my parents, uh, pastor and their wife came to visit, you know, they came to see us, um, brought us food too, because we've been there for 20 hours. And so, baby was born, I was moved to the hospital delivery room, and um, that's when I learned that his mom has, had landed in Las Vegas, and she came to the um, hospital room the following day um, with her friend that I had seen one time. I'd never officially met her or anything like that, but I'd seen her. Um, and so I felt really uncomfortable that there was this woman in a hospital room that I didn't even know, you know? But thankfully enough, they didn't really stay that long. And um, so I was discharged two days later. I saved, oh, I asked for an extra two days. What happened was um, when the baby was born, I never, I, I didn't have any kids of my own. So I was really uncomfortable when it came to feeding him. He didn't pee for 24 hours, so I was concerned with that. And so I asked the nurse if she would allow me uh, to stay another day. And they said usually they don't because of health and in, health insurance purposes and all that. And I had state health insurance myself. And, um, but they said that I could stay another day just so I can be around the nurses to make sure everything's okay. Part of that reason was because the plaintiff, while I was in the hospital room the whole time, he har had harassed me so bad to the point where I told him I didn't want him to be on the birth certificate. He, would, he was sell telling me threats, you know, if I didn't put him on the birth certificate, this, this, and this would happen and um, all this stuff. And I didn't feel comfortable. Actually, um, the head nurse at the time, she came into the room um, after I was crying and she asked me, look, what happened? What's going on? And I had to lie to her and tell her I'm fine. Um, so then, um, one of the nurses in the room while my parents were there, um, I had talked to my parents and I told them, I don't want to go uh, to the apartment by myself. I don't feel safe. I don't feel comfortable and I don't know what I'm doing. And so, um, and I asked them, can I stay with you guys for a few weeks until I at least know what I'm doing or get a grasp of things because I don't feel comfortable with the plaintiff um, being around the baby. Um, the nurse was there present for that conversation and my parents actually asked her opinion. They asked her like... Well, then you can't testify okay. as to what the nurse said or your parents asking their opinion okay. or those kinds of things. Okay, thank you. So she, um, uh, okay, so that happened. Um, uh, I eventually came to the decision that I um, wanted to stay with my parents because I felt better that way. Upon, uh, and I felt, I felt a great amount of pressure after threats to put him on the uh, birth certificate. Even his mom wouldn't leave the room until I signed his name on the, uh, um, on the birth certificate. We finally got discharged, and I um, went with my parents into their car because they had the car seat ready and everything. We went home to their house, um, and we stayed over there. And the plaintiff, I mean, he had that open door and opportunity to come over and see the baby whenever he wanted. He knew where they lived, but instead he would often choose to uh, go out with his friends or go play poker or whatever he called working. And so I took care of the baby by myself the first few weeks of his life, you know. I got to know my baby, got to learn to be a mom, and then um, May 21st came, um, and that was when I was supposed to go back to the apartment. Um, on that day, we went to the apartment um, with my parents, and um, you know they got everything situated. Like we had this talk about uh, rotating. Like usually, new parents um, share. Uh, a schedule like every two hours or something someone stays up with a baby and so we had agreed upon all of that um, we even wrote down a little schedule my parents were like okay we're gonna leave we're gonna go home they went home and so that night the plaintiff didn't want to I'm sorry it, this was before May 21st um, this was like a week before May 21st so my parents um, they we, we did all that whole schedule and then um, we saw that well actually that night, he didn't want to stay up with the baby at all. When I confronted him about it, he said that he needed to sleep more 
he needed he needed his sleep and I explained to him I'm a new mom I just gave birth to a baby you're not gonna help me take care of your own child like watch your own child you didn't want to do it so I went back home May 21st came and I decided to give it another shot we went over there to the apartment um, and so there was a disagreement between me and the plaintiff um, on terms of him watching the baby for a few hours um, and this was after my parents had left. But him watching the baby for a few hours, and um, he didn't want to. And so he began getting like, uh, I don't know, his, his attitude changed, his tone, his behavior, everything like that. And he um, jumped off the balcony. He came back to the apartment with police. And um, police told me, they knocked on the door and they came in, they said, why are we here? And I said, I'm not sure, why are you here? And so um, they, explained to me that the uh, plaintiff had called the police because he wanted me out of the apartment. Um, and I and I didn't know what to do. I was, I'm there, I just had a new baby who was like three weeks, you know, he's very young. Um, and then so the Metro told me that they can't, they can't tell someone to live, leave an apartment if the person's um, belongings are over there. And um, they, they told the plaintiff, well, actually, they asked me if there was any drugs involved because the plaintiff no, was behaving we're, paranoid. We're getting a whole lot of hearsay here. A whole lot of, on this. Sustained. You can't, since he's now objected, um, you can't say what the police told you. Okay. Fair. Okay, so um, police came, um, and then the result was um, the plaintiff packed a suitcase, and he um, decided to leave. Um, at that time, I was on FaceTime with my dad because he wasn't there, but my mom was. Um, and so he, he left. Later on in the day, he came back to the apartment, after he had chosen to voluntarily leave, came back to the apartment with three of his friends. Um, and then he, he, he there were, they came into the apartment, saw that I was there, and tried to get me to leave. My, par my mom was there, and... Um, as she mentioned in her testimony earlier, um, she said, call the police. And that's when they all left the apartment. They all ran. Um, and so they were downstairs. This is the, the apartment was on the second floor. They were downstairs. We were on the balcony looking at them, and they were walking around, you know, threatening, in a very threatening manner. And so my mom sent him a text message, as she mentioned in her testimony, um, asking him why he had bought, brought three big men. Um, and she... Uh, I had, she had, he had brought three big men against one woman, with, which I just, her daughter, who just had a baby. And his response was because he didn't listen. And so that, to me, sent, you know, fear and all that. And so I went and I filed a police report of the whole situation, which I, I um, which I've, uh, so, uh, sorry, submitted in one of my exhibits. But I didn't feel safe, you know, like. Well, that hasn't been admitted into it. Okay. Is. You want to identify it and try to admit it, mm -hmm. but it's simply your statement to the police, correct? Okay. So Can we? It has no relevance if it's just what you reported to the police. You've testified as to what you did and what happened. Okay. So I felt I felt that threat and a threat, and I went and filed a police report. Um, and so um, the plaintiff had a key to the apartment where he could come anytime. And actually, he would come to the apartment, but not to see the baby. He would come to um, uh, get his stuff, more of his stuff. Um, and so these uh, messages have, have been submitted in the past, so if you can take a judicial notice of past messages as well, no, if you no, can. No, I can't take judicial notice of past messages. Okay, so... Uh, if you want to identify them, these are the ones that have already been identified and admitted? No, no. There, are, there are others. Okay, then you'd have to lay the foundation and move for their admission. Okay. Um, that's okay. I, I had asked the plaintiff, um, is he going to come see the baby? Is he going to um, send any diapers? Is he going to send anything for the baby, any money, anything? Um, didn't, didn't respond, didn't do it. Um, and so the financial burden of the baby was on me. I had to take care of him by myself. Um, neither of us were paying the rent in that apartment. It was his aunt. And so I didn't have a job at the time. My parents came over to the apartment every single day to make sure that we had enough food um, and to make sure that we had some company. Um, but at the end of the um, at the end of the day, they would obviously go back to home to their to their house. Um, but they would come whenever every single day. After my mom got off work, she would be there. Um, when my dad didn't have work before and after work, he would be there um, for us. And so one day, June thirteenth, I believe, I received um, papers that were served to me um, at the door. And it was a complaint for child custody. And I was surprised, you know? I'm like, you have a whole key, key to come to the apartment. Come see the baby whenever you want. Um, 
and you can you can at least ask about how he's doing or anything like that. But there was this complaint that said that I was keeping him from the baby, and so um, we finally went to court about that whole um, matter, and um, eventually it came to um, he had to complete a parent. Eventually, no. Yeah, eventually came that he had to complete a, um, a parenting class before um, visitation because I was generally concerned about the baby. And I've mentioned this before also in previous hearings. He, there was one time where I caught him trying to stuff a blanket in the baby's mouth. And when I confronted him about that, I asked him, what are you doing? And he said, the baby won't stop crying. Um, and that concerned me. You know, I didn't feel safe with... Um, with that, like the leaving the baby with a person with that type of mindset, because that's not how you soothe a baby. And um, at the time, I didn't, um, I didn't, I wanted to go with a um, route of not giving the baby a pacifier since I was breastfeeding. He was very young, slowly breastfeeding, um, and so I can just put him on the breast, and that helped me um, identify whether or not he was hungry, um, whether or not he needed to be changed, his cries, and so. Um, I didn't want to do that because then I wouldn't be able to put a pacifier because then I wouldn't be able to identify his needs. Um, and so the blanket incident happened. And so when I brought that up to the judge, that's when she ordered um, that he take a parenting class before he um, began visitation, just so that we're safe, that he knows how to handle an infant. Um, his visitation began before he completed the parenting class because his lawyer went and um, filed a motion for him to begin earlier. Um, I, I, I opposed it because I didn't feel that it was right. Like you, to, because he doesn't have anyone here in Las Vegas, like no family that can help him, you know, guide him towards how to take care of a baby or anything like that. My parents had offered, he refused um, their help. Um, and so, um, I, didn't, I just didn't feel comfortable with it. The judge recognized that. He started taking his parenting classes, and then he started visitation before it finished. Um, he was ordered to submit, to file the certificate for the completion of the class. He failed to do that twice. Um, and then finally, in Gentile's courtroom, um, she asked him, where's the certificate? And he showed a picture of it that was on his phone. So he never actually filed a, um, a certificate of completion. Um, but she took it. She accepted it. Um, and then the visitation began and the, um, but it wasn't even overnight or a full day or anything like that, but I saw that he was not taking care of, treating, taking care of the baby properly. Um, and so he would, he would go times not feeding the baby. Um, he would say that he doesn't have any food. Or he would say that he didn't change the baby's diaper, or, like outwardly say all these things, or that he... Objection, you're saying it would be a statement of the party opponent, so overruled. Okay, so he would um, say all of those things, say he's not feeding them, um, changing his diaper, and that was concerning to me. I brought this evidence up in front of the judge. The judge didn't um, consider it at all. She completely disregarded it and then ordered us to do a 2-2-3 two, two, um, uh, arrangement, even despite me providing substantial evidence. And so 2-2-3 two, two, began, and... Um, you know, I, I've, I've had to go through with it, like I have had to go with it, but it's not, it's not, the, it's not a good arrangement because for one, I'm choosing to do a baby led weaning when it comes to breastfeeding. He's still one, he's still, um, he's still very small, and I, I want him to be able to benefit from that. Um, for sure. He doesn't feed 24-7 or anything like that. He doesn't feed overnight or anything like that, but it is also a supplement because I don't give him cow's milk since he has that allergy. Um, don't give him any formula or anything like that, so I'd rather and just give him... the testimony uh, about an allergy that there's absolutely no evidence. I provided sustained. medical records. So um, if that. the medical records show there's an allergy, then I will take it into consideration. Oh, okay. But I won't allow you to testify that he has an allergy if there's no medical documentation to support it. Okay. And medical documentation is not you telling the doctor, it's the doctor diagnosing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I, I've provided medical records. I'll look and see. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. And so, um, I, um, as a mom, I decide that's, that's just the best route for my child. It helps him a lot. It's beneficial to him, and it also creates that bond. Um, and so, um, with that too, too, 
and swapping weekends. It's hard because he goes away, you know, five days at a time. It's hard because he's young. He's so young. He's one. He can't come back and say, hey, this is what we did for this week or this, this is what happened. Um, he can't speak for himself. But one thing that does speak for the baby is um, the condition that he comes back in. But his body isn't going to lie. Um, and actually, um, when I confronted the plaintiff a few times about the uh, condition of the baby or the health, he's always argumentative about it. Um, instead of saying, okay, I'll take care of him or okay, um, he, he always has an argument with it to make it seem like it's my, my, um, my, it's my doing. The baby's sick Your, or I'm not taking care of because of me. So I, I understand. This the, is a narrative I, that's I getting carried away. Yes, well, and I understand, I understand the, the, the admission of a party exception to the hearsay rule. However, since before visitation, or since before my client started exercising custodial time in this case, there's been an order in place in this case that all communications are to be on talking parent. The talking parent records have been admitted today. I, I do object to these extraneous statements, and this whole narrative is peppered with them. That, you know, plaintiff told me this, plaintiff told me that. If Your it's Honor, not, if we want, I can point the, to. If it's not the talking parent record, I can point to I, I object to it. I object all to right, it. All right, so here's, here's the issue. Um, I won't strike her testimony, but I will review the talking parent and I will look to see what they have discussed in terms of the weight that I give to her testimony, the Thank same you. as I would do to the weight to be given to his testimony. And um, so, yeah, when it comes back to the condition of the baby, he can't talk for himself, you know. He needs um, someone who can advocate for himself. And actually, um, when I was... When I was in the, when I took, recently took him to the doctor, um, CPS was called, um, I, I had an interest. Do you have any record from CPS showing that they've done any kind of investigation? Um, I can obtain one. I mean, the lady gave me her card, so I can obtain something and submit it for sure. Well, that's what you should have done by today if you're claiming there is a pending CPS investigation. Okay, they should I give mean, you an event number. Um, I, I have a reference number, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So, um, so she used the term of... Um, you cannot okay. indicate what she said to you. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so there's that involvement. It's new and it's recent. Um, and it's based off of the... Um, the November visit to the emergency room with a severe diaper rash. Um, okay. And when you go back to the desk, I'll let you give me an event number. Okay, thank you. And um, so that was in response to that and the actions that the doctor took. Um, I, they, they ha have to contact, they ha had to. you cannot say, you can't give me hearsay. Yeah, I'm, it's not what they said. You can state that you believe that CPS has that there is a pending CPS complaint and that you received a card with an event number on it from a CPS person. Okay. You cannot say what, who called or why called mm -hmm. or who made the complaint or things of that nature. Okay, so I was notified of that um, situation. Um, but overall, throughout these visitations, I've been the... Um, protective parent. I've been taking the baby to seek medical help when a situation is, um, when, when he's, he's, he's not well. Um, and what, what is so concerning for me is the fact that he can send the baby in that condition and not say a single word to me. He won't make a comment. He won't send a single message. And so I just, to me, that leads me to believe that he doesn't care about the baby. You, you've spent five days with him, you're changing his diaper, and you're, the rash is continually getting worse. Why not just t communicate that to me? It's always a surprise to me every time I get him and there, he has thrush, or he's got a severe diaper rash, or he's got an ear infection. I have to figure that out on my own. He won't say anything at all. Um, just recently, the diaper rash was so severe, I sent him to an ex on an exchange with um, a nice sign medication, and um, I, I had told him to use to mix it with zinc, and because um, it took that was that was what I was to, well okay to mix it with zinc, 
And so when I received the baby following that, um, you could tell um, that the diaper rash was getting better because finally he was being, um, he was receiving a, a medication for it. Um, well, he was, it was being treated, it was being looked at. Um, and, um, but there was no, no evidence of zinc being used in the diaper because the Nystatin is a certain color, it's a yellow, zinc is white. And you can tell when a baby has, you know, when his diaper contains certain contents, you know. And so it's, it's, so, it's concerning that the baby can't speak for himself and, all of the, and he has to go through all of these things um, with a parent that won't, he won't communicate what it is that's going on. Every time I receive him, it's always, it's always something I have to discover on my own. You know, I have to find, oh, I open the diaper, I change his diaper and I see, well, and I see something and I'm like, well, what, how am I going to go and care for my own child? Um, most of the time, well, at, to this point, it's a situation where um, I've learned what I should put on the diaper rash. I've gone to the drugstore with my mom. Um, we read the, the medication. We look at um, the uh, Aquaphor and the Eucerin, and we use that on his body because... Um, uh, it works to treat, you know, eczema or dry skin or rashes. Um, I take him to his well visits, and I've brought it up. Um, I brought it up the the um, what I use on his body, um, just just to you know mention it. Um, but yeah, it's it's very it's unfair that the that a one year old baby who can't talk has to go through all of this, all of, you know, all of these things. And there's one parent that's taking care of him. There's another parent that's sending him in a, a bad condition. And that's all I have to say. How, how much time do I have, Your Honor? Because I, I mean... If I can reset this for another day in the interim, I will order any CPS records that may exist. That's fine. Um, and you can finish your cross-examination or do your cross-examination then if that's what you wish to do. I mean, or you can complete it tonight, and uh, that's rather unfair to the clerks because no, no, we're really no. not supposed to keep them past 5.30, and tomorrow is a holiday, so they may have personal things they need to do as well. Let me, if, if, I, if, if I can just start my cross, I'll respect the court's time. I understand that there's some other records that the court wants to see if they exist, um, and that's fine. Um, that, that's really up to you. I don't want to cut you off. Um, you know, I allowed the testimony to go on a little bit longer and can allow I just, people I, to I know I'm not going to have this done in five minutes or seven minutes. I mean, it just, there's no way. Well, so. I can go to 530, but it's difficult for me to hold them past that. They're not supposed to do overtime. Right. And if you're looking at, I, I would rather right. not would, start it and then stop it and start again. Right. If we're going to do it, I'd rather do it again. And I would think you might have an hour because I, that's what you've been doing. Well, so, if, I've got, if I've got 15, 20 minutes, I think I can get If you want, I, I'm not I, cutting you off. Right. You can proceed with cross if that's what you'd like to right, do. Thank you, Honor. Ms. Sunglazi, you just spent a lot of time talking about the fact that you, that the, the the plaintiff doesn't communicate these things to you. Is that correct? Um, that, that, that's what you. That was what you kept. That wasn't. Saying, was that it, wasn't my whole. That, that, that wasn't my whole testimony. That things are going wrong, and he just drops them off, and he doesn't tell you anything that's going on. And that was part so of my testimony. I want to look. I want to look at my my exhibit uh, twelve, which is the the talking parent records. Um, Your Honor, can I object? Why? Um, you said you were going to take time to review the talking parents. Yes, but he can cross examine me today. We've talked about them and all parts of them. So, no, you can't object. He can cross examine you about that. Okay. Okay, so if you would go to page 18 of 91. When your, when your mother was on the stand earlier, we looked at these medical records that you had submitted, and one of them was from December of 2018. So... Actually, let's, let's go to page 17 of 91. Okay. So, so December of 2018, 
right? That's the date on this page of this all these conversations. That, that, that these are in December of 2018. Looks like it. Okay, and and it's a conversation about medical care, right? I don't know. I haven't read it. Well, so you said to the you said to the plaintiff. I'm looking at the one, two, three, four, fourth uh, statement down. It says, Karen Sambalaza on 12-9-2018-5-25-24 p.m. said, Southwest Medical, they're a huge corporation that operate with call center. You're free to give them a call. And then the next message you said, you know his name and date of birth, right? And then Nicholas says, what is this pediatrician's phone number? And you say, any Southwest Medical. And if you turn to the next page. Your Honor, I'm going to object. He's just picking and well, choosing lines. I, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to respect so the did you. Time. So did you. you go to the next cross-examining. So if you go to the next cross page. cross-examination, he can do this. Right? Nicholas says, he's on your health insurance. How do I provide that info if we need to see a doctor? And where, where is this? This is the top of page 18. That's what Nick says to you. And I am. I'm just trying to respect the court's time. There's a lot of, you know. And what's my response to that is making assumptions shows no education. No, actually, your response is a few lines further down. No, my response down. is immediately when you say, after that. When you say, you shouldn't be taking him to any doctor. I have primary no. physical custody. My you see that? My response is immediately after that. Okay. With my name, my response is immediately after okay, that. Okay, so he says at 528 mm -hmm. p.m., He's on your health insurance. How do I provide that info if we need to see a doctor? And my response and at 529, follows? No, no, no. My okay. response follows. It's the next line. Okay. So regardless, whether you want to call it a response or not, at 529, it you, is say, a response. you say you shouldn't be taking him to any doctor. I have primary physical custody. Right? And it also continues to say if there's an emergency, take him to the ER. Okay. So... He's trying to get information from you about the child's medical care. And at this time... And your response is, you don't get to take him to the doctor because I have primary physical custody. No, right? no, no. At this time, we... It, the judge had never ordered any... Um, anything, really. There, there was no order for... The our order was, if he was going to take the baby to the doctor, um, he can, do, he can choose, choose to take him to any doctor he wants to take him, and he's going to pay out of pocket Okay, for so it. regardless of what the orders were, though... But that's have, the order. You, you've characterized that my client never provided you with information, and yet, and this is just one example, and the court is going to review all these What information is being provided to your... None, and that's the problem. No, no, no. What so information is your no, client no, no. Here's providing? The thing. All right, the court's gonna you're look not going to argue with him. The, okay, and you're court, just going to ask a question and not argue. That's fine. That's fine. The court is going to review these records, and they're going to see numerous instances like this, aren't but they? What's the Where question? he's asking you a simple question about what's the question? information that's relevant to the child, Your and Honor, you I'm choose not to answer. There's no question here. He's trying to ask a question it, if you would listen. Isn't that, I mean, you looked at these His question is, right? is that typical of your refusal to give him medical information? That's what he's really asking. Your Honor, my child doesn't have medical insurance. There's no in information for me to give. Was he on Medicare at the time? At the time, yes. And he had medical insurance, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And he had a Medicare card, didn't he? Yes, but the and order... you could have given that information, and your answer is going to be, well, if she doesn't give you that, you could always go take him to a pediatrician and just pay for it out of pocket. Which was That doesn't that? relieve you of the responsibility of providing the information to him nor does it relieve him the responsibility of saying, because she didn't give it to me, I'm relieved because it's all her fault. You're both poor parents to that extent. Okay? That is not an excuse for either one of you to act in the manner with regard to questions about where's the pediatrician, where's the insurance card. Well, the judge said you could take him to anybody you want. He says, well, I don't have this. Well, the answer is it's not a justification for him. If he's concerned about the child's health, he can certainly take the child during his time to a pediatrician. If you're so concerned about his health and wanting him to do it, then one would think you would give him the insurance and encourage him to go to the same facility that you go to. So the answer is it doesn't show very well for either one of you in terms of it. Please move on, Mr. Leifel, because we're not going to get into no, arguments. Absolutely. Just absolutely. ask your question. She will either answer it or she won't. 
You can make whatever argument you want. That's fine. We're gonna we're gonna switch to exhibit eight. Um, can you find exhibit eight? Uh, this has not been previously admitted, but it is an order entered in the case. I'm asked the court to take judicial notice of this order. Um, okay. Entered on January 31st, 2019. Do you have exhibit eight for me? Yes. So you can admit exhibit eight because it's actually a document. From the I want you to go to the last paragraph on page two. You talked a lot about um, that my client didn't know what he was doing. He was ordered to take parenting classes and um, it took him a long time to finish the parenting classes. But actually, before you look at that paragraph on uh, page two, just at the top of page one in the right hand corner, you see electronically filed January 31st, 2019. You see that date? What was the date that you said? January 31st, 2019. I see that. Okay, and if you go to the last paragraph on page two, Says, it is further ordered to judge and decree that Karen shall complete the six session nurturing parents and families class offered through the Clark County Department of Family Services and upon completion shall provide proof of completion to Nick. You see that? Mm -hmm. And if you turn to the third page, you see Judge Marquis' signature there? I see a signature, yeah. Okay. Um, so on January 31st, 2019, you were ordered to complete a six session parenting class that you never even started, correct? Um, not correct. I completed a parenting class, and I have a certificate. They didn't file a. a they didn't fail to file a uh, certificate. I didn't file a certificate, but I do have one. I have one with me. I didn't file it or submit it, but I have one. You completed the six session nurturing parents and families class. Yes, I did. So okay. And when when did you complete that class? I don't remember, but I completed the class, and I have this. You have the certificate with you. You can file the certificate today if you wish to, or just show it to me. Yeah, I can show you the certificate. Just hold on. Okay. I want to direct your attention to Exhibit 1. It's been previously admitted. Our plaintiff's Exhibit 1. The top says 8.16 a.m. Okay, I'm on that page. And then the first entry starts that ice you drank. You see that? I'm on that page. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> um, my client's previously testified and authenticated this was a text conversation between your Honor, and, and may I respond? One more and What's the question first? Go ahead. So the, the, third, the third statement on that page that's in the lighter gray, right? It says the baby didn't even want you to hold him because he knows white people are evil. Your Honor, can I object? <clears throat> on what basis? Um, well, we already, these were already presented and the court already admonished me for them and I did apologize already. I mean, we well, already dealt with this That doesn't mean matter. that there can't be evidence in this hearing. Okay. So you can object, but no, that, that's why I admitted the evidence over your objection, because the court may have already admonished you, but it's still something that can be considered um, in terms of all of the evidence over custody. Oh. Do you think white people are evil? No. Okay. If you read further down, you said, speaking about the child, you said he's black. His family is black, and he's going to grow up knowing he's black. He's never going to like you, LMAO. You see that? Yep. Your, your baby's biracial, correct? Yeah, he is. Okay. Um, and only half of his family is black, correct? I Actually, I don't know. I don't know his side of his dad's side of the family. Okay, but you've met some of them, right? I mean, um, his mom and his aunt I've only, today. I've only, I don't know. I've only met two people. That's okay. it. All right, but when you say his family is black, you're talking about your family, right? I, I honestly, I don't know who's on his dad's side of the family. It can be anyone. Okay. The time at the top is 8.23 a.m. And the first message starts, bah, ha, ha. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. And again, this is you texting... Nick, and you say, bah, ha, ha, you're going to have a lonely, miserable Father's Day. You have no recent photos of Julian to post. Why didn't he have any recent photos of Julian to post? Objection, Your Honor. The context, I mean, where's the previous messages to this? Ma'am, you can testify to that. Just answer the question. Why didn't he have any recent photos of Julian to I post? don't know. Was it because you weren't allowing him I'm, to see the child? I don't know why he didn't. If you skip two more pages, 
start to really hope you lose. Can you see that? I'm on that page. All right. And on the second entry there, you, you write to Nick, also take off that you're Julian's father because you're not, you're just a sperm donor. And all your friends are about to know how pathetic you are to abandon your own child because I'm going to message them who you really are. You see that? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you regard Nick as just a sperm donor? No. I want to skip two more pages, though, to the last page of this exhibit. And I, I asked your, your mother about this, and then you actually brought it up in your statement that she was texting with Nick. Um, so did, to your knowledge, was your mom texting Nick on occasion? This was a, honestly, this I'm not was, asking about this one specifically, no, no, no. but you mentioned it. On, so. on May 21st, uh, this I've never seen. Okay. This isn't my, my, I don't know what this is. But on May 21st, she did have... A conversation with him through text message. It wasn't this because this wasn't May twenty first. Okay, so when she said she might have talked, she might have texted with him a long time ago. To your knowledge, she was texting him something in May of twenty eighteen. I don't. I don't know. What, what do you do for a living right now? I'm a full time student and I work part time. Full time student studying what? Political science. And how close are you to graduating? Objection relevance. What is the relevance? Your Honor, there's been a lot of uh, conversation today about what my client did or didn't pay for, what he was willing to pay for, and, and a lot of disparagement of my client's profession uh, as a professional poker player. And I want to, I, I think it's fair for the court to understand what what her, okay. her view what of... She's, what she's studying probably doesn't matter, but the sure. she's above turn stupid. But her, okay, but her date of graduation and what she intends to do after that point, I think, are relevant. Okay, that might go towards child support. Okay, so what, what is your anticipated date of graduation? Um, it's going to be December of 2019, next month. Okay, and what, what kind of degree are you going to graduate with? Regardless, I mean, objection, relevance, that has it's nothing to do with what, I, I, mean, what I do. Yeah. It's relevant to potentially your ability to earn more in the future. Okay. So there's some relevance. Okay. What was so your question? Will you get what, a what sort political of degree science degree, a bachelor of arts yeah. degree? That's what he was asking. Okay. Yeah. Associate's degree, a bachelor's degree. It's a bachelor's. Okay. And what, what are your, you said right now you're a full-time student. And you're, you said you're working part-time mm -hmm. doing what? Um, I work in a restaurant. Okay. That's, well, I mean, what is your position? I serve. Okay. But objection okay. relevance. So do you... Again, it goes to child support. Do, do you intend, ruled. after you obtain your degree next month, do you, do you intend to continue working as a server part-time? or? I don't know. Okay. When you say part-time, how many hours a week is that? It ranges anywhere from 20 to maybe 25. What is your relationship with Steve Sampson? Uh, he's my friend. Okay. When did you meet him? Objection, relevance. What's the relevance of her friendship with Mr. Sampson? Well, she went on his radio show and talked a lot about my client. Objection, hearsay. <coughs> so... No, if you talked about him, it would not be hearsay, it would be a party opponent. The question is, did you listen to the radio show and know that it was her? Right. Oh, she was introduced, yeah. I mean, it's actually on video. It's, it's on All his... All right, so what's the point? I'm just trying to figure out Okay. whether... Well, her relationship with him is probably not relevant. Her... What she may have said um, on the show with regard to this case may or may not be relevant. How about this? Do you do you acknowledge that you went on Steve Sanson's veteran and politics radio show and talked about this case? Um, I. What are you referencing? Which which um, which date? Have you ever appeared on Steve Sanson's Veteran in Politics radio show? Objection, red, relevance? I mean, I can appear on I, the show. I already indicated there may be some relevance if you appeared and talked about the case, depending on what you said. 
So this first question is, have you done that? Yes or no? I've been on his show. Okay. And did you talk about this case on that show? I talked about my relationship with the plaintiff. Um, I spoke about a previous um, my a previous experience with a previous judge. I didn't reference the case number. I didn't reference the case name or anything like that. But you didn't mention my client's name, correct? No, <laughs> nope, not at all. Okay. But you said you were speaking about your relationship with. You admit that you were at least speaking about your relationship. Objection with relevance. Ma'am, I've already answered that three times now. Objecting the fourth time isn't going to make any difference. I said that he could inquire into it. Okay. So there's some relevance. So you need to answer the question. I don't know. I don't remember. Well, I'm just, I'm repeating what you just told me. You said that you spoke about your relationship with the plaintiff, right? I don't, you know, I don't remember. And you admitted on that show that... Now she says she doesn't remember, so if she doesn't remember... Okay. Uh, I think just in the interest of everyone's time, this is probably... A, you won't be able to wrap up by 5.30. By 5.30? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I promised the court 15 minutes, and, and that was 20 minutes ago. No, I'll give so. it to 5.30 because that's... Okay. There's some leeway to go to 5.30. Beyond that, <coughs> it becomes much more difficult from a logistical point of view. All right. When Julian was an infant, you co-slept with him, correct? I don't remember. Now I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask that the court take judicial notice of the video recordings of the first three hearings in this case, wherein the Is defendant... Is it your representation that at those hearings she personally made a representation to the court or testified that she was co-sleeping? And was admonished against doing so? Well, and what she was admonished... Right. Yes. It's not my question. Yes, that she. If you wish me to that, listen to a hearing to see if she actually made such a statement, then I will listen for that limited purpose only. Okay. And I would ask that if you believe that to be true, you supply me with. The dates and the video area. You don't have to do that now. You can do that subsequently Perfect. before the next court date. Does Does Julian currently have medical insurance coverage of any kind? No. No Medicaid. No Medicaid. No. My answer was no. He has no medical insurance of any kind. No. Okay. I already answered the question. Okay. So when you take him to you know, you've submitted some medical records when you've taken them to the doctor. Do you pay cash? They don't, they don't ask me for it because it's the emergency room. They don't ask me for anything. They just ask his name, his date of birth. So he just gets free, and, free and medical treatment. And medical bills, medical proceed like bills will be sent is what they say. So I'm, mm. I'm yet to wait for those. Did he have insurance back in December of 2018? I don't remember. Did you ever get a bill from this December 2018? I don't, I don't remember. You said that he's been to the, uh, the doctor as recently as just earlier this month, correct? He's been to an ER. Okay. Did you, did you notify the plaintiff that he was going to the ER or had been to the ER? I don't remember. I mean, is it in the talking parent records? Did you let him know? I there? mean, when when you submitted these records before he went to the doctor. Okay. Well, I mean, do you, 
It was just, I don't know. You said it was just a week ago, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Did you, do you recall, do you remember? Yes, answer sending? the question. Okay. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Okay. So now we can do what's called redirect, which simply means if you'd like to clarify any point that he made on cross-examination, you may do so. Um, no, no redirect, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. That will conclude then your witnesses. Am I correct? Yep. Okay. You step down, and you can get <coughs> your certificate that you say you have with you today. Okay. Thank you. The record reflects the parenting project um, was completed on August 13th, 2019, um, and uh, so the copy will be marked as um, defendants next to in order and admitted. Must that be sworn in? No, no, they're already sworn in. Still on the road. If you would, um, just look at plaintiff's exhibit four, please. Can we object to this? We'll let him just identify it first okay. and then we'll find out. Okay, go ahead. Can okay. you identify exhibit four? I can. What is it? This is my certificate from completing baby care class in the fall of 2018. What's the date on it? It's a photograph of the certificate. Right. What's the date on it? Yes, it's a photograph. And what's the date? Of the, the date is December 1, 2018. Okay, and is this the same photograph that you presented to Judge Martin? Objection hasn't been admitted. He's it's laying the foundation. Is this the same photograph that you presented to Judge Marquis as proof of your completion in open court? Yes. Uh, I asked now, that what's your objection to its admission? Um, it's a picture. It's not the actual certificate. Well, yours is a photocopy, and it looks like the actual certificate, so... Um, there's nothing about it that would indicate to me that somehow it's been concocted or manufactured or something of that nature. It looks just like yours. Um, so it's just a photograph instead of a photocopy. So your objection is overruled. And Exhibit 4, is it? Proposed Exhibit 4 is now admitted. I, I, I don't have any further rebuttal questions. All right, may so I, may I you may go back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, Ms. Uh, Sangalaza, do you have your card with the CPS case number that you believe applies? Um, gave you a referral number to CPS? Yes. Yeah. I don't think I have the card. It's the card with me, but um, I can file it. It's probably, I don't know if it's at home. All right. So this is what I would like you to do. Mm -hmm. I would like you to make a photocopy of the card. Uh -huh and email it to the department law clerk. Okay. And I want you to CC that email to Mr. Lytle. Okay. The department law clerk will get it to me. And you have till um, 10 a.m. on Monday to do that. Okay. okay? What is the um, email for the department law clerk? I mean, I don't know which clerk it's going to. Look, it's just the It's just Department Q Law Clerk. Okay, and then what's uh, Mr. Lytle's email? I assume that you've received that in the past from communications, <coughs> but Mr. Lytle will give it to you. give her another card. No, 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 I don't need a card, just the email to confirm that I email. No, no, he can give you the cards because it's got the email on it. Okay. That's why he wants to make sure. So I know that the card was given to okay, her. Okay, so this is mine. I have this email. Okay. I just wanted to confirm. That. 
to make it that it was the same meal meal right. we've had previously. That's fine. All right. So when we come back, I will have read uh, those documents that I didn't have time to read today since you both want me to read in more in depth the um, documents. And I will, in the interim, ask CPS, based upon the information you supply, what, if anything, they have under that event number. And for them to supply the records to me, then those records are not given to the parties, but right. both parties can review them, and then they're filed as a left side filing, again, so it's not part of the public record, but it is part of the court record. We need to give enough time at least for CPS to be notified and get some response. So December the 19th, and it is uh, Mr. Rifle, um, I would prefer to do it at 10 a.m. because we have to find a courtroom for me to use. So I don't know what courtroom it will be in. Okay. So I'll make it 10 a.m. There'll be no additional testimony. I'll simply have the CPS records. And then um, if I get them early enough where I have read them, I will be prepared to render an oral decision that day. If I don't get them early enough, then you may have to wait. I, I, would, I would like the opportunity to submit closing, even if it's in writing. You can both do that if you'd like to submit a seven-page closing statement that summarizes the evidence and why you think that evidence supports your point of view. Actually, I'll even make it ten pages. Thank you. Each of you should have that document done um, by December the 13th. Um, just from no, any complaint from November 18th forward. I don't believe there's any others. Um, let's, let's stay with December. I don't want to postpone. Okay. Right. So we'll be in recess and you all have a pleasant Thanksgiving. Thank you. You as well.